Good evening. This is Akashwani. I am Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines Government convenes all party meeting ahead of monsoon session beginning tomorrow 31 bills to be taken up along with discussion on issue of violence in Manipur In Uttarakhand 16 people died and 11 injured due to electrocution in Chamoli at least 8 people killed due to floods and landslides in Jammu and Kashmir India to host ASEAN countries conference on traditional medicines in New Delhi tomorrow Star Indian Shatla H.S. Pranoy and Priyanshu Rajavat advanced to second round of Korea Open Tournament. K. Shri Kant and P.V. Sindhu ousted in first round. In cricket, India defeat Bangladesh by 108 runs in women's second ODI at Chere Bangla National Cricket Stadium in Dhaka. Ahead of the monsoon session of parliament beginning tomorrow the government today convened an all party meeting and sought cooperation from all political parties for the smooth functioning of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha briefing media after the meeting parliamentary affairs minister prahlad joshi said 31 bills are expected to be taken up during the session he said the government is ready for discussion on the issue of violence in manipur he appealed to the opposition parties for their cooperation on such an important issue पोजिशन पार्टीज आई ऑल्सो गिवन और कुछ हमारा सहयोगी दल भी सजेशन दिया है और सभी पार्टियां मणिपुर के बारे में चर्चा की मांग कर रहे थे जब मान्य स्पीकर और चेयरमैन डेट डिसाइड करेंगे समय डिसाइड करेंगे और जो भी इश्यू है नियम और प्रक्रिया के अनुसार स्पीकर और चेयरमैन के परमिशन के साथ सरकार चर्चा करने के लिए तैयार है During the meeting several opposition leaders raised their demand to discuss the Manipur violence in parliament the meeting was attended by union ministers Rajnath Singh Piyush Goyal Congress leader Jairam Ramesh Professor Ram Gopal Yadav of Samajwadi Party AAP leader Sanjay Singh M Tambi Durai of AIADMK Lalan Singh of JDU Nama Nageshwar Rao and others Congress leader Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary said his party will raise the issues of Manipur violence train mishap in Odisha flood situation inflation unemployment and situation on the Indo-China border during the monsoon session after the meeting Sanjay Singh of Aam Aadmi Party said several opposition parties will strongly oppose the government of National Capital Ter- Territory of Delhi amendment bill 2023 Meanwhile Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla also chaired a meeting of the Business Advisory Committee ahead of the session he said leaders of all parties have assured cooperation in the proceedings of the house The monsoon session will continue till 11th of next month and there will be a total of 17 sittings in this session spread over 23 days during the session important legislations including the government of national capital territory of delhi amendment bill 2023 the cinematograph amendment bill the biological diversity amendment bill the multi state cooperative society amendment bill the digital personal data protection bill the forest conservation amendment bill the national dental commission bill the national nursing and midwifery commission bill and the railway amendment bill are expected to be taken up with divakar bhupendra singh akashwani news delhi on the eve of the monsoon session the news services division of akashwani will bring you discussions tonight focusing on the pressing matters that lie ahead in parliament the program issues before parliament in english will be broadcast on fm rainbow simultaneously sansad ke samaksh mudde in hindi will be aired on fm gold and additional frequencies both programs will be broadcast from 9:30 pm to 10 pm The Indian Meteorological Department IMD has said that rainfall activity is likely to continue over Konkan and Goa, Maharashtra and Gujarat today and isolated heavy to very heavy rainfall thereafter. Isolated heavy to very heavy rainfall is very likely to continue over Odisha for the next 5 days and over Chhattisgarh, Vidarbha and Telangana during the next 2 days. Light to moderate fairly widespread to widespread rainfall with isolated heavy rainfall is very likely over Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh Gilgit Baltistan Muzaffarabad Himachal Pradesh Uttarakhand and Rajasthan till the 23rd of July The Met Department also said that subdued rainfall activity is likely over northeast and adjoining east India during the next 5 days 
in Uttarakhand. 16 people have died while 11 others were injured due to electrocution near the Namami Gange project on the banks of the Alaknanda River in Chamoli district today. President Draupadi Murmu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Union Home Minister Amit Shah, State Governor Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh and Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami have expressed deep grief over the accident. Our correspondent reports that seriously injured people have been sent to Ames, Rishikesh for further medical treatment. The tragic incident took place in the morning inside a sewage treatment plant of the Namami Gange project site near the Alaknanda River when 16 people came under the grip of high voltage current and died on the spot. In this incident, five injured are being treated at the district hospital, while six seriously injured have been airlifted to Ames Rishi case. The rescue operation was carried out by the SDRF as soon as the information was received. Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami announced ex gratia amount of Rs 5 lakh east to the next of the kin of disease and Rs 1 lakh east to the injured. He also also ordered a detailed magistrate inquiry into the incident and submit a report within a week. The Union Home Minister Amisha also spoke to the Chief Minister over a phone and inquired about the incident. Meanwhile, the Chief Minister visited the injured at Ames Rishikesh and assured them of all necessary help from the state government. Sanjeev Sundriyal, Akashwani News, Dehradun. In Jammu and Kashmir, at least eight people were killed due to floods and landslides triggered by heavy rains in the upper reaches of the Katwa district of Jammu division. Two houses collapsed due to heavy rainfall in the Bani area of Katwa district. Four bodies have been recovered, while a massive rescue and search operation is underway to locate the missing others. Moderate to heavy rainfall was recorded across Jammu and Kashmir today. Due to heavy downpour, the water level has increased significantly in rivers and streams across the Jammu division. The administration has closed schools in Kishtwar, Doda, Rajori and Hili, belt of Kathua district due to inclement weather. Meanwhile, the authorities also suspended Yatra to Vaishno Devi and Amarnath Shrine. Met officials said that heavy to very heavy rain is possible at some places of Jammu region during this week. The Mughal Road connecting twin border districts of Rajori and Poonch in Jammu division with the Shupyan district of Kashmir division has been closed due to multiple landslides. This is N. Gulshanana for Akashwani News from Jammu. Monsoon rain continues to batter most areas of Himachal Pradesh, including capital Shimla. As many as 725 roads, including two national highways, are still closed in the state due to heavy rain. Monsoon continues in Himachal Pradesh, claiming 130 lives so far due to heavy rains, landslides and floods. In the tribal district of Lahaul Spiti, about 40 bighas of fields and plantations of farmers in Patan Valley have been washed away due to frequent floods and landslides in the Jahalma drain. Floods have also increased the water level of Chandravaga River and have caused Jasrat village situated on the banks of the river to suffer the most. Meanwhile, Director of Meteorological Center Shimla Surinder Pal said that the monsoon will remain active in the state till July 25th, due to which a yellow alert has been issued for heavy rainfall at various places in the state and people have been advised to stay away from rivers and drains. Ritesh Kapoor, Akashwani News, Shimla. Normal life has come to a standstill as persistent heavy rain continues to batter Mumbai and its suburbs for the third day in a row. With close to 50 millimeters of rain across the city in the last 24 hours, many low-lying areas have reported waterlogging. With a prediction of heavy to very heavy rainfall in Konkan region and a red alert in Palghar and Raigad districts for today, NDRF has deployed a total of 12 teams to assist the state government. In Telangana, incessant rain continues to lash several parts of the state for the third consecutive day today. The state government has geared up to deal with the situation in view of the forecast of heavy to very heavy rain during the next few days. The Met officials forecast that light to moderate rain or thunder showers are very likely to occur at most places over the state for the next two days and warned that very heavy rain is likely to occur at isolated places in North Telangana districts. Meanwhile, the current incessant rain brought much needed relief to farmers as the state had rainfall deficiency of up to 50% during the last month. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. India will host the ASEAN Countries Conference on Traditional Medicines in New Delhi tomorrow. The India ASEAN Conference is being held after almost a decade and 10 ASEAN countries including Cambodia and Vietnam, will participate in it. The conference aims to strengthen the platform between India and ASEAN countries to share their best practices and draw a roadmap for future cooperation in the field of traditional medicines. 
Home Minister Amit Shah will inaugurate a national seminar on the delivery of CSC services through the Primary Agricultural Credit Society PACS at New Delhi on the 21st of this month. During the program, various aspects related to Common Service Centre CSC services by PACS will be discussed. Till now, 17,000 PACS have been onboarded on the CSC portal, out of which 6,000 PACS are going to start providing services as CSCs. The center has further slashed the price of tomatoes and it will be sold at 70 rupees per, per kilogram by NCCF and NAFED from tomorrow. Department of Consumer Affairs has directed NCCF and NAFED to sell tomatoes at a retail price of 70 rupees per kilogram rate in view of the declining trend in tomato prices. The tomatoes procured by NCCF and NAFED had been retailed at 90 rupees per kilogram initially and then reduced to 80 rupees per kilogram from the 16th of July. The reduction to 70 rupees per kilogram will further benefit the consumers. The Ministry of Coal has extended the last date for registration and self-evaluation for the star rating of coal and lignite mines from the 15th to the 25th of this month. This is one of the measures to facilitate greater participation and ensure accurate self-evaluation. In Bihar, the NIA has arrested a member of the banned organization Popular Front of India PFI from East Champaran district today. East Champaran Superintendent of Police SP Kantesh Kumar Mishra said Sultan Khan alias Yaqub, who was the trainer of PFI, has been arrested by the Central Agency from Banskhat under the Chakia police station area. The SP said police had registered a case against him in 2002. The arrest was made during the wee hours with the help of ATS and state police. The accused was absconding since the case was registered against him. A committee constituted by BJP President J.P. Nutta to probe the police lati charge on a protest march in Patna city of Bihar today submitted its report to him. In a tweet, Mr. Nutta said the reports exposed the brutality and insensitivity of the state government towards the opposition parties prevailing in Bihar. He added that the BJP struggle against the anti-people policies of the Nitish Kumar government will continue. Domestic benchmark stock indices today witnessed gains of around half a percent to close at fresh record highs. Both stocks gained amid positive global queues. The Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange closed near 67,100 points. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange ended above 19,800 level. A report from the business desk. The Sensex gained 302 points to finish at 67,097. The Nifty also added 84 points to settle at 19,833. In the Forex market, the rupee closed at 82 rupees and 10 paise against the US dollar. And in intraday trade, Brent crude was trading at 80 dollars per barrel. Gaurav Dhamanlal for Akashwani News. In badminton, star Indian Shuttle H.S. Pranoy advanced to the second round of the Korea Open Super 500 tournament at Yeosu, Korea. Pranoy defeated Jay Karagi of Belgium 21-13, 21-17. Priyanchu Rajavat also advanced to the second round of the men's singles event with a straight game win over local player Choi Ji Hoon. However, P.V. Sindhu and Kidambi Shrikant were eliminated in the opening round. In women's cricket, India defeated Bangladesh by 108 runs in the second ODI at Chere Bangla National Cricket Stadium in Mirpur, Dhaka. Tracing a victory target of 229 runs, the hosts were bundled out for 120 runs in 35.1 overs. In the first ODI played last Sunday, Bangladesh defeated India by 40 runs in a rain-hit match in Dhaka. The third and final ODI will be played on Saturday at the same venue. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Government convenes all party meeting ahead of monsoon session beginning tomorrow. 31 bills to be taken up along with discussion on issue of violence in Manipur. In Uttarakhand, 16 people died and 11 injured due to electrocution in Chamoli. At least 8 people killed due to floods and landslides in Jammu and Kashmir. India to host ASEAN Countries Conference on Traditional Medicines in New Delhi tomorrow. Star Indian Shatla H.S. Pranoy and Priyanchu Rajavat advanced to second round of Korea Open Tournament. K. Srikanth and P.V. Sindhu ousted in first round. 
and in cricket india defeat bangladesh by 108 runs in women's second odi at shere bangla national cricket stadium in dhaka that is all in the news at 9 good night